What's going on guys and girls? Uh, today I wanted to cover 3D engraving or 3D relief or also grayscale engraving. And uh, basically what, what the machine is doing is it's going to be fluctuating the power based on the, the scales of gray. Uh, so from white to black, it's going to be adjusting the intensity of the power in order to get different depths into wood, acrylic, um, and other types of soft material where basically the material can be removed at different rates based on the power. So the first thing that you really need to do is find an SDL file or a grayscale image um, that will be conducive to, to doing this type of work. And I'll show you what I typically look for. And I've seen one going around the internet um, and it's a, a bee with some honeycomb in the back. So I'm gonna do an STL grayscale and B. And we're gonna see what this pops up. And I do believe that it is this one right here that is being spread around a little bit. So 570 by 570 is good, but I would like to see if I could find a little bit better one. Um, maybe if we use our tools, size, and large, we might be able to find a little bit larger one. And if we can't, we can't. Um, if not, then I will try to up the resolution a little bit in Photoshop. Let's go back and just do a quick little search here. Okay, so that's the best we're gonna get. Um, so there's the same one at a different angle. Uh, that's a pretty cool one. But we'll do the one that I've seen floating around. So I'm gonna download this. Save image to downloads. And then I'm going to open it in Photoshop real quick. Downloads. Open with Photoshop. So typically with these, you don't need to do a lot of editing. Uh, we're not going to be removing the background. Um, you don't need to really mess around with the adjustments as far as brightness and contrast. Um, you can if you would like to, uh, just to give it a little bit more depth or just to clean it up a little bit. But typically I don't, I don't really mess around with that. I kind of like the way these things are shaded to begin with. I will increase the sharpness and then also the size. So I will go to sharpen, smart sharpen. This way we get a little bit more edge detail. Uh, we don't want to go too crazy with it because it will kind of change the way the grayscale mapping is. It's going to create come some lighter spots and, and that is okay. So at this point, I would just do my image size. Um, we're going to try to do this a four by four. And then the resolution, I'm going to bring it up to 400 DPI. And that'll, that'll make it a lot larger, and this way Lightburn has some more information to, uh, to really get that grayscale uh, depth mapping going. File, we'll export it as a PNG. And just double click there. This is gonna be our B, 3D, and save. Okay, so now we can bring that photo into Lightburn, and then we're going to set up the grayscale in Lightburn by double clicking on our image layer, and then going over to, let's see, we have it set as gray. Hold on, let me back out of here real quick. Make that black. Now, <clears throat> depending on your machine, and your lens, you're going to need to know how many DPI you can run to your machine. I'm going to run this with a 1.5 inch lens on a 100 watt machine. Um, so I'm probably going to, going to keep it 
closer to 300 dpi i'm also going to select grayscale and what grayscale is doing on the co2 laser is like i said earlier it's going to basically take the map of gray so over here in the corner where we have really really dark shading the power our max power um, will be used the areas that are really light like along this branch here and these leaf tops that's going to use the min power and everything else in between is fluctuated between your settings of your max power and your min power so if we go back into our image and we put let's uh let's do 26 for our max power and knowing where your min power threshold is and by that what i mean is your turn on point of your laser um what at what level of power does your laser turn on now you want it to either just barely turn on or or not turn on at all um, this way it isn't engraving some of the lighter areas so i know mine on my thunder laser is somewhere right around six uh six to eight depending on my process that i'm using so i'm going to actually pick uh seven right in between Okay, and then we have our line interval it is all set. So DPI, line interval, same thing. Um, my scan angle uh, on this one really doesn't matter. Sometimes I like the scan angle to be 180, so it starts on the top and I can see faces and eyes first. And if I'm, I'm messing up, I can uh, basically stop and readjust. And we have our grayscale on and it is going to go on some wood so i will unclick the negative image now if you do a negative image then obviously uh, it's going to be on either acrylic or something like that where you want the lights to be engraved using the max power so it'd be flip-flopping your max and min uh, you're not changing your max and min but the reference to those settings on the photo is what's going to change. Another thing to think about before you start doing this is what you're putting it on. Um, obviously, we just discussed the negative image and acrylic, but um, typically a lot of people are putting stuff like this on, on wood. Um, the three-dimensional does work well on, on thicker acrylics um, with multiple passes uh, to keep it nice and clean. Uh, you can't go to the extreme on one shot. Um, you can't use a really, really high power and um, expect it to be really clean. I, I recommend on acrylics, if you're doing something like this, a grayscale engraving, to uh, take it easy and, and basically do multiple layers or multiple passes uh, to achieve a higher quality image. So the materials that we're using, if we're doing just something on wood, we would have our negative unselected because we want the max power to be all of these darker parts. Uh, you need to pay attention to the types of wood that you're using. MDF will work good, and that's just press board. Um, other softer woods that don't have a lot of grain because you are trying to get different depths. And if you have a lot of grain in your, in your wood, then that's going to screw up the entire image because the grain is going to show up sometimes more so than the actual image. So we've processed the photo. We have it all set in Lightburn. Let's take it out to the machine and, and plug it in and let it run and see what we end up with. Okay guys, so what I did was I ended up uh, increasing the size of that to five by five. Uh, I wanted to take advantage of the, uh, the size of the material that I have. Um, also, if you've watched my videos before on, on photos, uh, you know speed is of importance. So for grayscale, um, 
grayscale is pretty hard on the machine. It's keeping the, the tube on the entire time as, as opposed to a dither where it's pulsing the tube to make the dots. The tube is on the entire time and fluctuating power as it moves along. So you're gonna wanna go pretty slow. I'm going at a 10 inches per second. On grayscale, I'm usually right in between eight inches per second and 12. I usually don't go any higher than that. Um, asking a lot of the machine to be able to vary that, uh, that power as it's moving along and I want better quality. The slower I go, the better chance I have um, of having that translate from the, uh, the, the computer or, or the information going to the actual laser tube. So you can go too slow. Um, and I've noticed that I get some curtaining where you have vertical lines. And that's just something to be aware of. If you do get vertical lines, um, it could be a machine or a mechanical issue, but it can also be a speed issue. Um, and let's, uh, let's do a little bit time-lapse here and we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay guys, so it's coming out really good. Um, I can tell that there is depth to it. I can see some of the edges. Um, and if I go to sand it, it's going to pull away most of those high, those high areas and leave you know, deeper areas dark. But what I'm gonna do is, I think I went a little low on the power, so I'm gonna run it a second time with a little bit more power and then we'll sand it and we'll see what we get. So while that's running in the background, uh, I just wanted to go over, these images are really, really hard to tell how good they are um, with a photo or a video. So when you go to show customers your work or, um, or promote it online, it's really, really hard to tell the depth that these actually create. I'm gonna try to get down low and, and try to see if it's visible but there's, there's a good amount of depth in there, especially on that edge, you can see. And maybe right there you can see a little bit better. And this is on MDF. So MDF works really well to basically a proof of concept that, it, that the three-dimensional engrave works. And uh, if you go with a thinner MDF, it's uh, relatively inexpensive uh, to do testing on and, and you can really show what your work will do and what the machine can do with some of this three-dimensional engrave. All right, so I kept my minimum power at seven. Uh, we are keeping, or actually we've changed the max power to 38% on 100 watt tube. So we'll see what that's going to get us. I'm going to I'm going to guess there's going to be a lot more depth. I could already see on that back line the amount of depth that it is creating. So once that's done, we'll uh, we'll sand it and show you exactly what it looks like. So it just finished up with the second run with a little bit more power. And typically I would air blow off some of the debris that's on there. Now I'm just gonna wipe it down real quick. And then I'm gonna lightly sand it. And you know, use an orbital sander. Um, one of these sanders will work just fine. Light grit, low speed and just lightly go over it. And there you have it. From different directions, you're gonna get a little bit different view.
but it looks pretty cool. And I'll show you on the other side the versions of some that I went a little bit deeper on. Again, hard to tell the depth on some of these, but you can really, really get creative and do some really good quality. This one came out really cool. Now, not only can you use these STL files as a grayscale, but you can also use them as a half tone or a dither. And here's the result that you end up with that. So if you run it as a half tone or a dither, uh, like a Jarvis pattern, this is what you're gonna get. And there is zero depth to this. It is all shading. And let me tell you, it is impressive. Um, it looks three-dimensional, but it is not. So this is all something that you could do with these files and just, you know, tweaking, tweaking the settings ever so slightly. Let me flip it over. There's another tool on the other side. So you can get the illusion of 3D on wood and other materials using these STL files or grayscale CNC files um, with a half tone um, or with a Jarvis dither. But I hope that helps some of you guys create some really cool pieces and make sure you tag me in them because I want to see them. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.